Hey there, Father Michael here. Over the past year and a half, we have all had to deal with some things that we certainly were not anticipating. Things that we never thought we'd have to deal with. Fears and uncertainties and wondering if maybe COVID was going to write the last chapter of our lives or the last chapter uh, in the lives of people that we loved. It was very disruptive. And suddenly, all of a sudden, a switch was thrown and we had to find gratitude for things that we had formerly taken for granted. Things like going to live church services and concerts and the cinema, eating out in restaurants, salad bars, <laughs> coffee shops, but also some other things, simple things like shaking people's hands and hugging people, the kiss of peace at, you know, during mass or during worship that became something else. Grocery shopping became a struggle. I didn't buy groceries in the store for over a year. I literally had the stuff dropped off at the door like I did five minutes ago. So a lot of things changed. I wasn't even able to visit my homebound people, my parishioners. I couldn't I couldn't visit people in nursing homes or hospitals. People were unable to have public funerals for the people that we lost. So it was a struggle. During that time, literally hundreds of people came by the church on Sunday afternoons and introduced themselves. And they came because I was offering drive-through communion. And I got to know quite a few of them. I blessed a lot of children and animals and heard confessions in the car, blessed vehicles. It was an amazing time. I was able to help people who were tweaking, people who were so intoxicated they really should not have been driving. <clears throat> But as soon as all the restrictions were lifted, what happened? All traffic stopped, including 99% of my own parishioners didn't come by for communion, even though there was not any live worship or live mass. The reality is Human beings seem to need tragedy and upheaval to remind us who we really are so we don't get distracted by our pettiness and our narrow-mindedness and our, you know, our precious, uh, convenient lives. We tend to be grateful only in hindsight rarely in the present moment. And the reason I'm on that page today is because yesterday was pretty traumatic for me personally. I, I learned some medical news about my son that I should have been told six months ago, but was not. And that news is that because of his many seizures, he is no longer going to be able to swallow food normally ever again. Those throat muscles have atrophied to the point of no return. And so the only way that he can get sustenance 
is to swallow pureed food. Literally everything has to be pureed into a thick paste in the blender. And even his liquids, he can't just swallow liquid <clears throat> or he will aspirate them. Everything has to be thickened, even his coffee. Well, needless to say, this dad was devastated learning this news. Because food is something that he and I have always shared. You know, it's, it's part of communion. We received communion yesterday, and I thought, what, what is that going to look like? So I just need to take a breath and pray. Because the idea that he and I will never be able to go out to a restaurant again and have a meal together is pretty devastating, to be honest. So that drive home from his place yesterday was in the silence for sure. No radio was playing, no music was playing. Pretty emotional and, and had it not been storming basically all the way home, I had been planning to stop by the little shrine at the Poor Handmaids because that's a safe little place for me to go and just let everything out. The question why is looming large, even though, you know, my better self already understands that there is no answer to the why question in this life. Shit happens. There is no answer to that. There is no God up above saying, oh, you get to get COVID. Oh, you get to get HIV and die, but you get to get HIV and live 50 years. There's no God up there saying who gets to live, who gets to die. Life is a crapshoot. And God is not the author of all of these circumstances. But God is in all of those circumstances, always trying to help us to be with us. That is the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. I am not alone in being tempted to ask the question, why? In, in the book of Judges, the story of Gideon is told. And in chapter 613, Gideon himself says, uh, you know, hey, what's up here? Because Really, if our God is with us, then why is all this shit happening to us? That story of Gideon, I think, is one that I'm holding close right now. Kind of finding strength in knowing that I'm not the only one to face uncertainty not the only one waiting for God to work with me and be with me and put God's arm around me and reassure me that it's all going to be okay. So that story of Gideon is powerful for me today. Whenever we're in the place of doubt or questioning or, you know, tempted to ask the question, why? God is always with us, helping us. We may not see it, we may not always perceive it. Sometimes, straight up, it feels like we are in this mess all by ourselves, but that is not the case. And I already know from experience that feelings are just feelings. They're transient. And they may or may not be accurate reflections of what's really, really true and what's really going on. I know from having lived this long that it is God. 
who always takes our frustrations and our hurts and our doubts and our devastation and just helps us, gently guiding us along the path. And even if we don't know all the forks in the road and the bends and all of that on this path, I do know from experience that it always works out. So today, maybe a little turnaround, I'm asking for prayers for my son and for myself, but also for all of those who are struggling right now, whether it's with their addictive behaviors their drug addiction, their alcohol addiction, their sex addiction, whatever it is that is distracting them from embracing God's grace in this moment. Let's remember all of those today who are asking why that each of them might have an increase in trust find a way to let go of resentment and fear and find gratitude even in the struggle of this moment because I promise you the day will come when we will look back on today and be able to see with absolute clarity what an amazing gift today really is. Pray with me, please. Gracious, tender God, we open our hearts to your presence in this moment. First of all, in gratitude for all the times when you have walked with your arm around us, guiding us, helping us find strength and purpose, and reminding us that we are precious in your sight. Be with us in this moment loving God. Be with all of those who are struggling right now, all of those who ask why, all of those who are trying to be their best selves but are trapped in habits and patterns that are based on fear, fear of not having enough, fear of not being loved. In a special way, thank you. We thank you for this day of struggle. And we trust as best we can that everything we go through today will be for our highest good because that is your plan. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Have a blessed day.